whether you are starting out in the game and looking for your first ship, or a seasoned veteran trying to find something you may have skipped over in the past, this could be the ship for you. Allow me to introduce the Mustang Alpha. Consolidated Outlands isn't exactly known for fighters in the Star Citizen community. Mention their name anywhere and the pioneer fanatics and space pickup truck lovers will appear out of the blue. But just because a brand doesn't have the fighting prestige of Aegis Dynamics doesn't mean you should rule this one out. Over the course of this video I will run you through the styling, game loops and equipment loadout for this ship and if you enjoy what you see a like, sub and share would go very far for a small channel like mine or even use my referral code if you are new to the verse. The Mustang styling is definitely a mixed bag. The long sweeping clamshell glass canopy effortlessly merges into the body of the ship, and with its sleek lines and sharp edges it looks pretty good. Having two large engine pods slung high up on the Mustang seems to counterbalance the heavy turret mount towards the front of this ship, and when we fire the reverse thrusters the front profile looks amazing. Moving into the interior, you'll find a well-arranged centre console, which can be seen even during the tightest of turns, and if I had to pick one word to sum up the view, orange. Lots and lots of orange. Oh, and a very prominent engine button, so all you new pilots have no excuse in finding it. However, looks are one thing, but how do the engines sound? Well, have a listen for yourself. The Mustang styling isn't all great. Missile mounts are left on the ship from a Delta variant, and while the visibility from this cockpit is superb, the glass does go exceedingly far back. One ballistic round through this lovely greenhouse, and you're in a world of pain. But these issues pale in comparison to one that I cannot stand, quite literally in this case. There is no way to stand up and move around this ship, which seems odd given the relatively large amount of space and amenities back there. The only justification for the excessive glass canopy is to light up that space, so please let me actually use this unique and well designed area. And yes it's ironic that many elite dangerous players buying into Star Citizen will experience deja vu here, but hey, the ladder works. Then again, for just over 250,000 AUEC, maybe I'm asking too much. Somehow Consolidated Outlands has squeezed in 6 SE of cargo, 2 size 1 shields and a toilet into something 2.5 meters shorter than a Gladius. When it comes to kitting out the Mustang, we will be going for a full laser repeater build. They offer double the shell velocity of cannons, making it easier to aim, and have one DPS difference, so it's really personal preference. In my case, I tend to always pick repeaters over cannons. Currently, all size 1 and 2 repeaters are identical per class. I will be going for attritions, as they are conveniently located at Lawville which is a train ride away from where you buy the Mustang. To power this build, the JS300 will do nicely. This Grade A power plant offers more than enough power for cannons or repeaters. While all Grade A shields offer the same HP, two FR66 give us greater module HP. Keeping this build cool are two glacier coolers. These have an average cooling rate, but easily meet the needs for our build. And finally, our quantum drive. We want to be able to move around the whole system in one tank. Therefore, the Atlas Drive is the way to go. It's by no means quick, but it works. So now it's time to make some money. What can the Mustang do? Well, if you haven't worked out so far, I'm slightly concerned for you. Your main source of income is bounty hunting. As always, I recommend doing this around Crusader. The main reason being asteroids are easy to see than space debris surrounding Hurston, and the distance between moons is smaller at Crusader, saving you valuable seconds. The best loop for the Mustang is group VHRTs, followed by as many single VHRTs as you can do before the group mission pops up again. This was typically free for me. 
With a 15% bonus from both Northrop Group and Crusader Security, I average 420,000 AUEC per hour. And remember to take Call to Arms under the Mercenary tab for an extra bonus. In the future, I don't really see the Mustang's role changing. While its compact wing design makes it a good carrier fighter for an Idris, Liberator or Kraken, there are many better ships at a similar size such as Fiaro. Because of its 41 second respawn time, this is the perfect ship to train up pilots with almost no capital or time losses. So, the Mustang Alpha. Is it the best starter ship out there? Well, if you know combat will be your main source of income, yes, I'd recommend the ship to anyone. While you only get 100 DPS more than an Aurora, it is far more manoeuvrable and flies considerably better in atmosphere. Just remember the Mustang has no bed or usable floor space, making certain early game loops such as box missions impossible. And while this is technically fast as a light freighter, a 6 SCU won't help anyone. With this being said, I don't really think that matters. A good starter ship should get you into something bigger as quick as possible, and that is what the Mustang does. Sure the Aurora is more versatile, but I'd rather be a master of one loop than a novice of many. And yes, the lack of bed means there will be no logging off in the black, but be honest, how often does anyone do that right now, let alone in the starter ship? For combat, the Mustang is a great place to start off. Its turret allows new players to turn on gimbal mode when needed, and while size 1s and 2s don't sound big on paper, your sustained repeated DPS is one less than a Gladys, making the Mustang a perfect trainer before moving up the chain into something more powerful. For PvE, this is the best starter ship for one reason more than anything else atmospheric bounties. I cannot stress enough how frustrating a poor flight model is in combat. Not only are you fighting the controls, but you are wasting precious time lowering your AUEC per hour. When it comes to your final decision, there is no overriding correct answer. But simply ask yourself, what is it you want from Star Citizen? And if that answer is combat, then the Mustang is for you. While ships like the Titan often get called the best starter ship, why spend more than you need to on an Alpha? when you can just upgrade this ship in the future if you really decide this game is for you. In a few hours of PvE grinding, the Mustang will have served its purpose. You'll most likely park it up and move on until the next server reset, at which point this workhorse will once again pick you up and open every door like a good starter should. But this is not the best fighter, but it will always kickstart your journey into greater things, and who knows where you will find the limits.